looking at here is a solar air heater. It's part of our fresh air comfort system. What this kind of heater does is take cooler air from the inside the building envelope. It heats it up and then pushes it naturally by convection up the heater and then blows it inside into the air. A very important component of our solar air heater are these fans. These fans can be used in either push or pull configuration. They bring cold inside air in and blows it through the air heater, heating it up as it goes, and then warmed up air comes back inside. The solar heater is really not visible from the inside of the house. All you see are the exit ports for the hot air coming in. The heated air in this particular case was being drawn from the basement, which is an open basement. It pulled in, heated up on the outside to the solar collectors and flown back in up there. In effect, you're creating a convective flow of air inside the house and gradually raising the temperature of the house using solar. What we're looking at here is the pump station and the holding tank for a solar water heater. The pump station in its lower part has a heat exchanger and a couple of pumps. We need two pumps because there's two groups of fluid going through it. One is the water that's in the storage tank, that's portable water. And then there's the working fluid, which is usually antifreeze, food grade antifreeze, propylene glycol. And that brings the heat down from our solar collectors into this tank. And it's exchanged via the heat exchanger here. So these two ports on the pump station are the ones that circulate our heated antifreeze fluid coming back from the solar collector on the roof. And these two ports exchange heat from that heated fluid back into the tank. If I were to shoot my thermometer on it, I'll see that the fluid is coming back, even on a cloudy day, it's coming back at about 85 degrees, 86 degrees centigrade. That heated fluid is stored in this, which is nothing but a GE storage tank that has not been plugged in. We're using it for its insulation properties. And we have a couple of sensors hooked up to measure the temperature at the bottom of the tank and closer to the top of the tank. Knowing that temperature is critical because it tells us when to start the pumps and when to stop the pumps. So for example, if I move this to here, I can see that the temperature is right now currently at 88 degrees. By default, the pump station shows me the temperature of the collector on the roof, which at this point in time is about 12 degrees higher. So we need about an 8 degree temperature dif differential to make it worth the while to be able to turn the pumps on and bring down that heated fluid back. So in other words, get energy from the roof back into our tank. Uh, here we're showing we're about 21 degrees temperature differential. So we should be able to heat this tank another 21 degrees, at which point it'll stop. The heated water in our storage tank comes out via this pipe and is fed as input into this tankless water heater. The great thing about tankless water heaters is that they're modulating. In other words, they burn less gas when you need to heat the water less and they burn more gas when the incoming temperature of the water is lower. So in this case, we wind up burning barely any gas. In most cases, we don't burn gas at all to pass heated water into the house. If there were not enough solar energy to be gained in, in our tank, the tankless water heater would have burned natural gas to make up the difference. It's very important to put in this piece which is an anti-scald or a mixing valve. We don't want to send too much hot water into this tank and then onwards into your faucet. The solar collector can heat the water in that tank to 160, 180 degrees, which is dangerously hot. We don't want to send that to your faucet. The mixing valve mixes in some cold water when it's too hot and sends no more than 120 degrees into the tankless water heater at all times. Another important component of our solar water heater is what we call a heat dissipator. So imagine that you were to leave for a week's vacation. You're still collecting heat up there and you're still dumping it into this tank. 
the temperature would rise and keep rising, there'd be nothing to stop it. This thing could explode like a bomb because you're not taking out the heat that you're putting in. What we do in that situation is turn the pumps on just enough to send that heat to a radiator outside, which is sitting in a cool spot. In this case, it happens to be under my deck. And we dissipate that extra heat before it winds up inside the tank and keeps going on. This, way, this allows us to be able to collect but not have to be forced to use it all the time.